I am recording this for the third time because the first two times didn't work. So hopefully this time it works. Okay. So anyways, the first project we're going to start with is the block printing, which I talked about in class and showed you just some examples. And then you can start brainstorming, brainstorming what you want to do. Uh, and I'm sending you home with planning paper. So block printing is, and what is it? is any surface that is flat typically uh, that is carved or gouged so it has a raised surface and a recessed surface that raised surface can be inked and then is transferred to a material typically paper and it makes a print so before I get into the tools we use I'm going to show this video of why we start with printmaking and design, and I want you to really recognize in this woman's spiel um, how printmaking is really conducive to marketing and why I actually really like printmaking. So what is a print, and why did Salvador Dali make prints? Um, well, if we go, we have to go back quite a ways. If we look at the um, beginning of printmaking, which was pretty much the late 14th century or 1390s to early 15th century, 1420s, 30s, um, Albert Durer discovered etching and engraving, but he didn't discover the act of engraving and etching. He came from a family of um, jewelers who bejeweled rifles and knives because all that's engraved. And he just in his head was saying, wait a second, you know, let's think about this a little bit. Couldn't I engrave images in a flat piece of metal and make prints? So Schoenbauer, Schoengauer was the first one and Albert Durer was the second to do that. Albert Durer being the most intelligent of the two in a sense because he foresaw the idea of market. Because he said, when I make a painting, it takes me six months. Oil paint is ridiculously expensive. And, you know, i got to saddle a horse and buggy and take it to another country to show the king. Well, a print, I can print off a plate 50, 100, 200, sell it for less money, and become a rich man. And so this already started in the 15th century. So the print medium has become two things. It's market driven in a sense where when you have an artist who's very, you know, has a very healthy market in their original work, whether it be painting, sculpture, video, um, or any, whatever, you know, or a performance, um, if they can make a multiple, meaning something that has several examples, one, it sells for less, and two, they can exhibit in eight different places at the same time with the same work. So it's a very, it's a very interesting um, thought process that goes on there. So Dali, of course, coming in. She does a lot of artist name dropping. But this is why I like printmaking so much. You get, you make one original piece, and then you get, you can print a whole bunch of copies, and trade or sell or exhibit in different places, and you still can keep the original. Uh, another thing that she mentions, and I told you to kind of notice beforehand, is yes, because you can make multiples, it is more market driven. You can sell them. You can just make more and more instead of having just one original, like a painting or a sculpture. <clears throat> so this is what a print. This is a wood block. We're going to use lino block. This is the act of printing. Here's a print on paper. And then here they have two colors. But to get two colors, you do have to have two separate blocks, which I'll get into more but something to be aware of. This is some of, these are some of the tools that we will use. We will use gouges. This is a linoleum block. You can see where they carved and where this is left remaining and then it prints onto the paper. This rubber roller on a handle is called a brayer. Brayer, that's how I will reference it. And then say you wanted to add different colors, they're choosing to add some small little 
pieces to add on. This is a terrible photo, but that's okay. You get the gist. There's different tips that you can put into the handles of our carving tools. U's, V's, small V's for detail, and then these little knives for creating bumpers or borders or cutting out big chunks. The act of carving. This is the printing. There you have a press here. We do hand printing, but you can see that printmaking is heavily relied on pattern and mark making to make a very interesting piece. I show this image because, <clears throat> excuse me, unlike drawing with a pencil where you can change your pressure or layer it to create darks to lights and medium tones, with printmaking it's kind of like drawing with a marker. It's either the marker or the surface you're drawing. There's like no really in between. So to create your gray zones or middle tones, you need to either remove half of the material or more or less of the material material to create lighter and darker tones. Like this stripes will print darker where this has more material removed, so it will print lighter and that is what becomes like your gray tone, which I'll show examples in pieces. Here is something that I like to point out where we normally or we typically when we're drawing or painting you tend to be adding a material to a lighter surface like white paper and you're adding on the dark tones with printmaking it is different that you are in the reverse you are your hand is carving out and creating the lights whereas normally or typically our hand is creating dark tones with a pencil with carving you are cutting out all the white tones. Can you notice what is different here on this block? Backwards. Everything has to be reversed. I'm not saying that when you design your lino block design that you have to do it backwards. I do have a trick for you to be able to just draw it normal and then we flip it on the light table in the classroom and then you transfer it to your lino block but it is something to remember and consider. If you forget to flip your block design, everything will be backwards. And I have had someone do the United States, a really nice design, and it was backwards. because so I forgot to flip it. So just some inspiration, some different works. <clears throat> Here's a nice example of this is block left raw, their carving of the pine cone, and then this nice mark making to create this middle tone. Again, being considerate of the way you carve and the shapes you carve, like this wood texture. Love these contours of her shirt, these little black strips left in to kind of emulate um, like wrinkles in the shirt, but also balancing it with these light open spaces and the dark solid of her hair so your eye gets a rest from all this patterning. Like it is good to plan where your eyes can take a break if you have highly intensive patterning and textures. Again, over here, emulating water with those ripples and the different textures, light bouncing off the grass. How you, like this reads as like foliage or a bush, but it, like when you look at these marks, you wouldn't maybe necessarily think of that, but when you stand back, your brain definitely reads this as trees far away, light on the ground. A lot of people have seen this piece, very old print, actually. A lot of people think the Great Wave is a painting. It's actually a print, and when you have a print, each one of these colors is carved on a different block. So this artist had to create and carve a block just for the dark blue, the light blue, and uh, all the different colors are separate runs. Another emphasis of patterning and just being aware of your mark making when you are carving. <clears throat> Another thing to note is I love how in printmaking it almost forces people to have not really a style, but you can't be as hyper realistic because you are relying on these marks. It's so like this I would not say like, ooh, fur, but it definitely reads really well on this rabbit. Your block does not have to remain a rectangle. We use five by seven blocks, but you could cut it to any shape you want. 
Another good example of leaving the block raw that would be this black, um, cutting out really nice sections of light, and then these hatching marks to create the grays. I probably wouldn't approve this design, a bit simple, but I do appreciate the different textures to create different depth and layer throughout the piece. Love this boxing in. Ugh, that simple line is just so nice and just like holds her in. Love that. Tree. Another nice example. This might be a little ambitious and too small of details in this part with the size of our blocks, but I do love the different areas developed in this block. I think that's it. So some different ideas. Um, you are given a linoleum block, but you can also use different texture plates to create texture. I've had people make texture plates as like a background texture and then they print their, put their linoleum block over top. You could use found objects. You can get a supplemental block to get another color or you can take advantage of your block and break it into pieces so you can get two different colors because these are printed in separate times. So <clears throat> you would print all your deer, come back the next day after it's dried, and then print all the yellow. And I will show you how you can get them to line up every time because you will be turning in three different prints, not three different prints, three of the exact same print. They should be identical in color, spot they are on the paper, and um, they should have the same amount of ink, hopefully. So I'm going to skip this part. We are going to do this to do the day before. So that is block printing. And I hope you are finding some ideas for your block print. I hope this kind of clarifies how it works. And I think that's it. Have a good day.